DaVinci Resolve is an incredibly powerful video editor that has been used to color grade and or edit popular films such as Avatar, Jason Bourne, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Star Wars The Last Jedi, just to name a few. It's compatible on multiple platforms including Windows, Mac, and Linux. And the amazing thing is, there's a free version which still has most of the tools you would need for most any project. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover some of the most important tools, features, and navigation to get you going within this editor. And I'm going to be taking things a bit slow in this video as this is geared for beginners to the application and I want to be sure that the information I'm presenting is palatable to individuals who have never used the program before. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And if you have any questions about what was covered or the application, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer. All right, let's get things going and we'll begin with the project page. Now the project manager is what we're usually going to see once we launch DaVinci Resolve and it's going to allow us to access and manage our projects and project libraries, whether locally on your computer's hard drive or a network or through Blackmagic's cloud service. So let's just start from the top and then make our way across to cover some of the features here. So at the very top left, we can always close out if we'd like to stop the application from loading. By default, we're gonna be on our local drive or drives. So any projects that we have on our local computer, we're gonna see on the main page here and we can access. We can also click on the network if we have set that up. We then have cloud, and this is Blackmagic's new cloud service, which is going to allow you to work with others remotely from anywhere in the globe on particular projects. You would need to visit the Blackmagic website and set up an account first in order to log in and use this service. But let's come back to the local. And then below that, we can access our project libraries by clicking on this little slider here. We then have a side panel to the left that opens up. This is going to update depending on whether we're using the network, local, or cloud. Let's come back to local, and we can hide that panel by clicking here. Now over in the right-hand corner, we have a few icons or buttons that we can make use of. This one here is going to allow us to create a folder. So I'm just gonna call this tutorial folder, and then press enter to create that. We can see in our main window, we now have tutorial folder. Now we have copy project two. We have a slider for making our thumbnails larger or smaller. We then have a sort window. If we click once on that, we can choose to sort by name, date modified, timelines, and so on. We then have a little I here, which is gonna give us more information about the particular projects, their resolution, and last modified. I'll go ahead and turn that back off. By default, we're going to be in a thumbnail view, as we can see. We can also switch this to a list view, which might be helpful if you have a ton of projects going on or you'd like to see more information about the individual projects. Let's come back to the thumbnail view. We then have a search feature, which could be useful if you have lots of projects. Now we just created this tutorial folder. We can actually drag projects into the folder. And then if I double click, we can see these have been placed inside. If I click, hold and drag to select both, I can right click and choose cut. Let's come up to the top left. We have kind of a breadcrumb trail here. Click on projects, right click, and then we can paste those back to their original locations. If we right click on the thumbnail for a project, we have a bunch of different options so we can open, open and read only, rename, import and export, and some other familiar actions like cut and copy. But I won't go through all of these, just know that you have some more options by right clicking on the project thumbnail. If we right click in an empty area, then we have some other options as well, not as many, but we can create the new project or folder as we did with the button up above import a project, restore project, archive, and so on. At the bottom left, we can choose to import a project. And if we have a project selected, we can actually export that as well. Then in the bottom right, we can create a new project or open. So let's go ahead and create a new project. And before we do that, let's right click on our tutorial folder and just remove that out. That's how we can go about removing these. Let's delete that. And then we'll click on new project. Let's then give this a name and press enter. 
So after we've created our project within the project manager window, we're taken immediately to the cut page. And if we take a look down at the very bottom, we can see that we have seven different icons or buttons for the seven different pages that are available within Resolve. And actually, let's come up to the top to our workspace. And then here in the center, we can choose full screen window. So let's go ahead and toggle that to make it full screen. Now, the seven different pages can seem a bit intimidating or confusing at first if you're just beginning working with Resolve. But I do want to be very clear that if you are a beginner or you have a small project, you can choose the edit page and perform mostly any action that you may need to do for your project besides adding fancy effects or doing extensive color grading. So if you are someone who's just beginning with Resolve, I would definitely recommend checking out the edit page and learning this first. And then as you become more familiar with the application, you can then branch out to discovering the other pages and get more into depth with those. Now in this video, we're going to take a very quick look at each of the pages, but then we're gonna devote the remainder of the tutorial to working within the edit page. Okay, so now these are ordered, these pages are ordered in somewhat of a way as how your workflow may go when you're beginning a project. So all the way to the left, we have our media page. And this is going to allow you to import and organize your various media that you're gonna be using in the project, adding metadata. So in the top left corner, we can access our local drives. So if I click on here, then I can come to users and then my desktop. Then I have a folder that I created for this tutorial where I have an audio folder, images and video. Let's double click on the video, select this first one. And the cool thing about the media page is that it's going to allow you to audition your media files before you import them into your project. So while we can see the thumbnails for these video files, they're not actually loaded into our project. Here, if we hover and scrub, we can view a preview of our video and audio. Now, if you would prefer not to have that audio, we can press Shift and S, and then that's gonna turn that off. Also, that live preview can be pretty intensive on your processor, so we can turn that off in our viewers by coming up to the option button, let's click on that. Then we have live media preview. So I'm actually gonna turn that off because I'm running OBS, my video capture software, and Resolve, which is intense on memory and processor. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna turn that live preview off, at least for the moment. But just be aware, one of the cool things about the media page is that we can audition our video, audio files. So if we come to the audio folder here, we have the audio file that I've loaded. I'll press Shift S. And let's actually... Okay, so we can audition our audio files as well. I hadn't expected to turn that back on so quickly. Okay, then we have our images. So clicking once, we can see those. Now on the right-hand side, we can see our embedded audio, the meters here, and then metadata down below. So for whatever is selected, we can see our metadata. And let's actually just be sure that we're in the default view for our media page. So I'm going to come up to the workspace, and then I'm gonna choose Reset UI Layout. Okay, so this is the default. I just wanna be sure that we're all on the same page. But in the top right, we can choose what panels we're seeing here. So right now, for the default workspace, we're seeing audio, which we can turn off, and we're seeing metadata. So let's come back to the metadata and select our image so we can see information clip details for it. If we come to our audio and let's select that, we can see information for that audio clip. Now we can also activate an inspector. Let's select our audio file again, nothing to Let's do, try that again. Nothing to inspect. Let's try a video file. 
and nothing to inspect. And this is actually because these have not been loaded into our project yet. Uh, we'll come back to the inspector on the edit page once we have loaded some media in. But just know that you can choose what panels you're seeing on this right hand side by clicking on these buttons up above. There's a capture. I don't have a capture device set up, but we can uh, choose what we see here. Now this we can choose to have a larger view for our clips in the media pool by clicking on this button here. But when it's expanded out, then we can have two panels open at the same time. And in the top right corner, if we click on this down facing arrow, we can actually come to shot and scene and add keywords to help us organize and find our media. So camera, a lot of different information that you can input to help you organize your project. Let's come back to the clip details and let's make our way back to the media storage area and let's click hold and drag a clip into our project. We are presented with a message asking if we want to change the project frame rate. Now what this simply means is that if you recorded your video on a camera that was using 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second, in this instance, Let's see if we can access that. Well, no, we can't when this window is open, but these were recorded at 24 frames a second. So we're gonna go ahead and click change. And we can actually see that here within our media metadata. So let's click change and that's gonna update our project to be in 24 frames per second. And now we can see we have our first media item within our project simply by click, hold, and dragging from the media storage area to our media panel below. And so now that we've imported this into our project, when I click on that, and then let's open up our inspector, we should see some options that are available to us now. And the very last thing that I wanna mention about the media page is that we can right click in an empty area down below here, and then choose to create bin. So. I'm gonna call this video, and let's actually click, hold, and drag that video that we imported into the video folder. Now when I double click on that folder, we can see that there. On the left-hand side, we can see that newly created folder video. If I wanna come back up to the top, I just click on master, and then we are taken back up to the top. Let's right-click again and create another bin, and we'll call this images. I'll press enter, and in our media storage area, I'm gonna to come to the images in the tutorial folder that I created for this video and just select the first one. Let's drag that into our images folder. So now we can see on the left pane here, we have our master, which is gonna show our images and video folder that we just created. Clicking on video, we access the contents inside there. Images, we can access the image that we just imported. So creating the bins is going to really help you to organize your project, especially if you are working on a project where you have tons of different video files, images, and audio files. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we're gonna devote most of this tutorial to the edit page, and I wanna do take a quick second to mention that we do have a media pool that's available on the edit page. So we could have done all of those actions that we just did, within the edit page and the media pool window. So we can see our master, the images and video folders that we created. Clicking on video, we can see the one that we imported and our image as well. Coming back up to the master, as I said, we can accomplish those same things that we did in the media page here within the edit window. So if I right click here in an empty area, let's create a new bin. And for this one, I'm gonna call this audio press enter. Let's double click on that. And I'm going to right click here. Let's choose import media. And we'll come to my desktop. Here are the tutorial files, the audio. So I'm going to click once on this file and choose open. And that's now been imported to our audio bin within the edit page. Let's click on master. And now we have audio video and images. Let's come back to our media page and we can see the three folders here as well. Okay, so I hope that you can see all of the different potential, the features and tools that you can make use of. We haven't covered everything, but just enough to get you going with the media page. And so next we'll move on to the cut page.
Now, as we did with our media page, I'm going to come up to the workspace up top here, and then let's choose to reset UI layout. I just want to be sure that we're all seeing the same thing. We'll come back to the workspace and put that back in full screen. Now, the cut page is going to allow you to do really quick editings if you really need to crank out a project or get a rough draft ready. Whether it's performing rough cuts or finding the specific segments of your video clips that you would like to use. So let's come to our video folder and double click on that. And then let's double click on our clip. And we can see that that shows in our source viewer. And here we have some in and out points that were created as I was preparing for this video. So I'm going to just click hold and drag these so that it will encompass the entire clip. And we'll double click again. So as far as setting our in and out points, if I come back to the beginning here, let's press the space bar to play back. I can then press I on my QWERTY keyboard. Let's say set an endpoint there. And an out there. So now we can see this is our endpoint and out point that we've set while playing back and using I for the in and O for the out point. So now that we've got the portion of our video clip selected that we want to use or import to our timeline, we have several buttons here that we can make use of. Now this first one that's not available is Smart Insert. We then have Append, Ripple Overwrite, Close Up, and so on. And we'll take a closer look at these when we're working with the edit page. But for the time being, I'm just gonna click on Append, and we can see that this segment that we set up within and out points has now been moved to our timeline. And if I come up above and drag that back, and even if we switch to the edit page and get a better look at the timeline, we can see that that's been placed at the very beginning of our timeline. If I press the space bar, Okay, and we've got exactly what we wanted. But let's come back to the cut page, and really quickly, I just also would like to show that if we have a clip in the timeline, we can start playback and press S to add a cut, S to add a cut, and add a cut. So this is another area that we can make use of for performing quick cuts to our video clips as well. But again, We'll do a more in-depth tutorial on the cut page. This is a beginner tutorial, so we're going to go ahead and make our way on to cover the other pages. Let's undo everything here. And we'll come to the edit page, which we just saw a second ago. And we're only going to spend three seconds here because the majority of the video is going to be spent here. Uh, just know that the edit page is where we can do all of our arranging of our video, audio, any titles. Putting our project together can be done here. And again, we'll come back to that. We then have the Fusion page, which we can use to add effects to our project. And this is definitely beyond the scope of this video, but it's a node-based system with a lot of flexibility, and you can really get some creative effects using Fusion, so just know that that's what this page is for. We then have our color page, which is going to allow us to do color correction and grading. In the bottom left corner, we have our primaries, color wheels. Uh, we also have our temp, tint, contrast, pivot, and so on. We, at the bottom, have shadow, highlight, saturation, hue, and we can even change the mode for this. So in the top right hand corner, if we click here, we then have color bars. Clicking the third option, we have log wheels. Now, here we have our curves, and we have multiple options here as well. Hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, and so on. And these can even be expanded out into a larger window or move to a second monitor. Let's put that back to the default. And then here we have keyframes. This panel can also be changed to scopes, whether you want parade, waveform, vector scope, etc. Let's put this back to parade. And then finally, we have info. So any clip that we have selected, we can see more information on it. 
Our clips will be listed here in this window. We'll have thumbnails. This button here will hide that if we'd like to have a larger view of our viewer to see the adjustments that we're making. Of course, this window can also be expanded out as well. And just as on the Fusion page, this is a node-based system, so this is going to be our node panel here. So everything that we get set up for our nodes will show in this window. We have some options on the left-hand side for choosing what panel we're gonna see. By default, we're going to see our gallery, and we can also choose to see our LUTs. We can see our media pool. If I come up to the master, we can see the audio, images, and video folders that I created. And we can see clips here. So that's going to show down at the bottom. We've already taken, taken a look at that. But I wanna quickly mention, so the media pool, now, we worked with bringing in some media on the media page, but we can access our media pool on every single page within Resolve, except for the deliver page. So anytime that we may want to do some additional organization or importing new media, we can do that within our color page, or we could do that within the Fusion page. Here's our media pool here. So again, this is not a beginner topic, and this Color correction and grading is incredibly deep, and the capabilities of Resolve are incredibly powerful because, of course, it's been used on many Hollywood films, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. But let's now move on to Fairlight, and this is essentially like a DAW within a video editor. And this is going to allow us to perform mixing for our audio, whether you have 10 tracks or over 1,000, we can add different effects here. We can even add VST instruments. As with the other pages, we have our media pool panel that we can access in the top left corner by clicking there. We have effects panel, index, a sound library, and Blackmagic actually provides a free one gig plus sound library that you can download. And then you can just search and find different effects. Then select that, and we can audition. So if you haven't installed the free sound library from Blackmagic, then you should see the option to do so. When you select your sound library, it's going to ask you if you want to install it, so you can take care of that there, if you're not seeing the sound files that I have. Okay, but these can actually be dragged in but let's undo that. Well, we'll leave that for the moment. And then we can see, now that we brought that in, we have some other channels in our mixer here. And then this is where we can go about adding different effects, or one of the areas where we can add different effects, whether it's distortion, dynamics, or the instrument, the VST. So these are my VST instruments here. So if I'd like to add those, if I have a MIDI controller, MIDI keyboard, I can actually play those MIDI instruments or the VST instruments with the MIDI controller and record the audio that's outputted from that instrument. We've got dynamics here, so by double clicking, we can open that up and we can see we've got dynamics, gain reduction, makeup. Then at the bottom, we can make use of the expander, whether we'd like to enter into that mode or a gate. We've got compression and we have access to a limiter. Let's close that window out and I'm actually going to control Z to go back to as we were. And finally, we have the deliver page. So once we've made all of the edits and arranging to our clips, our audio, our dialogue, and our text, our effects, and everything is completed, the deliver page is where we can go about exporting our project to a video file. And by default, we're going to have a customized export in our side panel here for our render settings where we can go into detail on the different formats that we'd like to use, whether QuickTime, JPEG, etc., the codec, 264, 265, the encoder, resolution, and the free version will actually allow you all the way up to UHD, 3840 by 2160, and I actually created a video on how to use the Deliver page to export or render down your project. So if you'd like more information on that, just click on the link up above. 
But the last thing I want to mention about this page is that we have presets that we can make use of too up at the top here. So if we are exporting to YouTube, we can click on the YouTube button here and the downward facing arrow, we can choose the resolution we'd like. So if we like UHD, then we can select that. We could see that this updates down below. And then at the bottom, if we had an actual project going on, we would add that to the render queue. It shows up here and then we can choose render all to export that video file. But we will come back to the custom export and let's make our way back to the edit page. And for the remainder of the video, we're gonna spend the bulk of our time here and go over all of the most important tools and features you need to know to get started with your project. So as I've mentioned previously, we can pretty much do anything that we'd like within the edit page. If we're working on a small project or we're not going to be doing any extensive work with adding effects or color correction and grading, there's a ton of flexibility here. And I definitely recommend that for beginners, you spend most of your time here. And as you begin to learn the application and want to dive deeper into working with effects and grading, then you can explore the fusion, color, and the fair light for mixing your audio and adding effects, etc. But there's a ton that we can do here. So let's go ahead and start by getting a layout of this page, a layout of the land. And if you're seeing something different, you can just come up to workspace at the top here and then choose reset UI layout so that you're seeing what we are covering in the tutorial here. Okay, so now that we're both on the same page with the same view, let's go ahead and start at the very top left and take a look at some of the controls that we have available. Now, all the way in the top left corner, we have this little button here where we can shrink whatever panel we have showing. Right now, we have the media pool. So if I click on that, then that will expand out our timeline, which gives us a bit more real estate for editing and arranging our clips. And I'm going to leave it at that setting for the remainder of the tutorial. Now, as I just mentioned, we have the media pool open. We can also switch to effects if we'd like to add fades or filters. We have an index and we have our sound library. So all of the panels that we can choose from up here will be shown on the left hand side. We'll switch back to the media pool. And then again, let's shrink that down. So we have more real estate for our timeline. We then have a source viewer, which is going to allow us to preview our video or audio or images that we're taking a look at from our media pool. And then here we have our timeline viewer, which is going to display all of our video and images from the timeline, which is empty right now, which is why this is blank. Now, if we'd like, we can change this to have one viewer by clicking on this button up above. And let's quickly switch that back to the dual viewers because I want to show that in the top right corner, we have other panels that will show up on the right hand side. And if we go ahead and activate, say the metadata, then we can see that the viewer is gonna to change to one, and then we can inspect information on various video and audio clips. Uh, or add view and add metadata, rather. The inspector will allow us to view information on our video and audio clips. Now we have the same button for shrinking and expanding the panels here. So if I go ahead and click on this button here, we can see that our inspector will take up the entire area of our right hand side. And while it's expanded, I can actually show two panels at the same time. So we have our metadata and our inspector. Let's go ahead and close our metadata and shrink this panel down. Now at the bottom, we have our timeline, which is where we're going to arrange all of our video and audio files. But let's start by bringing in some more media. Now we created these folders earlier on in the video. And if I double click on the audio, we can see that there on the left hand side, we can come back to master to see all three folders, or we can click on video. And while we have this open, let's right click and choose to import media. And we're taken to, or let's go to our tutorial folder that I created for this tutorial and the video folder. And let's click once to select this and hold shift to select all of these. We already imported this first one at the beginning of the tutorial. We'll click on open. And then we can see that these are now populated in our video folder or our video bin rather. Now let's come to our images, right click, import media, 
and we'll come to our images folder and let's select these last four and click on open. So now we have a bit more content to work with. And you can see that now that we have some of this media in, when I select here, our inspector will then show us more information on what can be done with this particular file, this image file. If we come to our audio and I select that, then we can see what we have available for working with it. Whether it's adjusting the volume, the panning, the pitch, we can create some speed changes, particularly with video, and we have an equalizer that we can make use of. We can activate these by clicking on the slider here. We know that it's active when it turns red, but we'll come back to the audio and inspector settings in just a moment. Let's close out that inspector panel and switch. Actually, we are on the dual viewers. So let's come to our video folder and take a look at how we can go about importing our video to the timeline. Now we have several different options and the first way that we could go about doing this is by coming to the clip we would like to import and we can hover to have a real time preview and that is the audio is playing back. If we don't want that, again, as I mentioned earlier, we can shift S and it's going to stop that playback. And also, as we saw earlier, if you don't want the live preview, we can turn that off and then that will no longer be active, but we'll go ahead and turn that back on. So we can bring a clip in just by click hold and dragging that to the timeline. And then we can see that we have a video track and an audio track that are created for us. And we can also see in our timeline viewer, now that we have content here, we're getting a preview of what's available. So if I go ahead and play this back, then we can hear and see the clip that we've loaded into our timeline. Now, another way that we can add media or video to our timeline is by selecting, by clicking once, and we can see that shows up in the source viewer, but let's actually double click, and that will make that stick and stay. And so we can come to the beginning of the clip by using the transport controls here, and we can start playback. I can also use the QWERTY keyboard. So pressing K is going to stop. L will play forward and J will play in reverse. And if we'd like to import this clip as it is to our timeline, we can just click, hold and drag from the source view, drag it to our timeline view. And then you can see we have an overlay with a bunch of different options. So by default, this is gonna be on overwrite and it's going to overwrite from the playhead position. So if I were to go ahead and choose that option, it's going to delete this information and add that second clip beginning here at our playhead. So let's come back to the top, click, hold, and drag it to our timeline viewer. And I'm going to append to end. And this is going to place it at the end of the first clip that we brought in. Now let's come to another clip and double click on that. And let's hit the back arrow to come back to the beginning of the clip and we'll press L to start playback. Now, if I press I, I can set an end point and O to set an out point. Let's stop the playback. Then when we click, hold and drag, we'll choose insert because our playhead is already at the end of the clip there. So we'll choose insert and that's going to add that portion that we set our in and out markers to. I'm going to dim the audio here. Now let's come to about the center of this clip here and then move on to another clip. And this time we'll click, hold and drag. And this time we'll choose overwrite. And if you notice the playhead is in the center of that smaller clip. So when I click, when I drop it on overwrite and release with my mouse, it's going to overwrite the second half of that clip after where we had the playhead set. So I hope that that makes sense. Now let's take a look at one more video clip. We'll double click on that 
And I just want to make note of these overlays at the bottom here. We have a film strip and then an audio waveform. So if we just like to bring in the video portion without the audio of a clip, we can select this here or click hold and drag. And then we will insert because our playhead is at the end there. And then you can see that this inserts our video clip without the audio that's in the file. So this could be useful for B-roll. And if I control Z, let's undo that. And then we'll set our playhead here just to show that we could, if we just want to do work with some B-roll, we could click on the film strip, drag over to our timeline viewer, and then choose place on top. And then that's gonna add that on top of our original clip. So then this will function more like B-roll. We can trim by coming to the edge and then once we have the bracket, just click, hold, and drag to pull that back. And then when we play this back, okay. So that's just a handy way that we can go about adding B-roll to our timeline. And you can see that this created a separate video to track. Now let's bring in a couple of images. And so let's select our image folder and we will click hold and I'm just gonna drag this directly to our video two. And we'll bring in one more here. And these are snapping. If you notice that, it snaps to the clip next to it. If we move this, this snaps to the playhead and that's because our snap is turned on, which is this magnet here. We can press in as in Nancy to turn that on and off or click when we have it turned off then we can freely move these about without any snapping but we'll turn that back on by pressing in and let's pull that in and finally let's come to our audio folder and bring this into our timeline as well and let's quickly take a look at some of the zoom functions for our timeline so we can manage this and see what we'd like to see now, just really quickly, if I press Shift and Z, as in Zebra, I can show all of the clips within our timeline. That's just a quick way to show everything. Now, I can also zoom with my mouse wheel. So if I hold down Alt or Option on the Mac and then position my pointer to a location within the timeline, we then zoom in to that area where our mouse pointer is positioned. This is going to be the default behavior. Uh, if you'd prefer to have it zoom in to the playhead, then you can come up to the view. And then here we have zoom around mouse pointer and we can toggle that off. And then now when I hold alt and use the mouse wheel, we're going to zoom in to the playhead. So see my pointer is out here to the right. And then as I zoom, that playhead becomes centered and we zoom into that area. So if you prefer that functionality, just come up to the view and be sure that the zoom around mouse pointer is turned off. But I prefer to zoom around the pointer, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. And now we can see we're zooming to the mouse area. Now we also have a slider here for zooming in and out horizontally in our timeline. And this ties in with the controls here to the left of the slider. So when we make use of the slider or the mouse wheel, we automatically switch to this custom zoom. But we have a couple other options. The first one here, we have full extent zoom. And when I press this or engage it, then we're gonna see all of the clips within our timeline. So that's a quick way to show everything that's similar to the shift and Z that we did a few minutes ago. And then we also have a detail zoom. So when we click in this, we're gonna zoom to a, more of a frame level. But let's come back to full extent. And then we also have a vertical zoom for our different tracks here. So if I hold down shift and hover on a clip here for our video one track, we can zoom in vertically for our video clip as well as our audio. And that's gonna adjust both at the same time. Now we can also accomplish the same thing by coming to the edges of our tracks and then we have the double arrows and I can click hold and make adjustments just the same. Same for our audio coming to the bottom track. We can expand that out individually. And then we have a bar. This can get 
be a little bit tricky to get used to. You would think that this will adjust the height vertically of our tracks, but this actually changes. This is kind of a center line between our video tracks and our audio tracks. So when I click, hold, and drag, we adjust the vertical positioning of all of our tracks at one time. Now we can actually lock our tracks by using this lock icon. So if I lock the video one track and then select the audio, I can pull that without moving our video track. So just know if you want to perform some edits like that, let's control Z to take that back. Even if we come to the left edge here and we have the single bracket, I can click hold and pull that in to remove to adjust the audio to where I'd like to, it to be without affecting our video. To unlock, we can just toggle that back off. We can also disable our video clack track by clicking on this film icon, and we can see that that's grayed out and no longer visible in our timeline viewer. We'll go ahead and disengage that. And you can see that we have a readout of how many clips are actually on this video one track here, four clips, one, two, three, and four. For our audio, we have mute and solo available. And we can lock these tracks as well. If we'd like to rename our track, we can just click once on the title there. And I'm just going to randomly call this food because that's what we're seeing. If we'd like to delete a track, then we can come to the track header, right click, and then you can see that we have delete track here towards the center. We can also add track, a single track, multiple tracks, or subtitle track. We can move our tracks up and down here, and we can change our track color. So let's go ahead and select the orange up top, and we can see that our clips have now taken on that color, as well as our track indicator here to the left. Now we have some other timeline view options by clicking on this button in the top left of the header of our timeline. If I click on that, we can see this pop-up window. So with this, we can have stacked timelines. So if you have more than one timeline, you can stack them by using this button here. And then for this, we can choose to view our subtitle tracks if we've added them. And then the final one that we have is audio waveforms. So if I click on that, the audio waveforms will be removed from our audio clips, but I do want to see those, so let's bring that back. Now, we can also choose a film strip view, which I believe is the default setting. We can see thumbnails throughout the entirety of our individual clips. We also have a thumbnail view, so this is gonna put thumbnails at the beginning and end of our clips, if there's enough space to do so. And then finally, we have a simple view, and that's going to hide all of the thumbnails. But let's come back to the film strip view. And then we have a few options for our audio view. Now this is going to be in non-rectified waveform. We have full waveform, so these get a bit larger. And we can also choose to see an outline. It's a bit hard to see unless these are zoomed in a lot, but we can add an outline to our waveforms with this last button. And then at the very bottom, we can adjust our video and audio track heights with these sliders as well. But let's go ahead and close out this window. Now next we have a few different modes that we can work with and by de default we're going to be working with the selection mode. So with this, as the name implies, we can select clips and move them wherever we'd like and again they're going to snap to our playhead and other clips. You can see that snapping behavior as long as our snap is turned on, which we already took a look at. Now let's hold Alt and zoom in a bit because I just want to show while we have the selection mode active, we can come to the end or beginning of a clip and trim, perform a trim, and we can see a preview in our timeline viewer up above. So this is going to let us know exactly where we're at when we're trimming that video. So we can be really precise where we would like to begin and end our clip, and then I'll pull that forward. Now, a simpler way to do this would be to activate our trim edit tool, or trim edit mode, and we can see we have a shortcut of T, as in Tom. So I'll go ahead and press T, and we can see that our arrow switches to these double brackets, and then if I come to the beginning of this clip, 
and get the single bracket. Now, when we click, hold, and drag, we then have the preview in the timeline viewer. Notice we have a dual screen there, so we can see the end of the previous clip and where we're moving the second clip to, and it's going to ripple edit all the clips that follow in our timeline. So we don't need to trim and then pull the clips forward. We can just, just activate this specific tool, and then as we trim, it's going to automatically ripple edit the clips that follow the one we're adjusting. Now, if we come to the center area between two clips, you see we have the double brackets. And then with this, we can adjust the end of the previous clip and the beginning of our second clip. So let's then adjust. We have the dual view. And on the left-hand side, we can see where our bowl of soup is going to be ending and where our other stew is going to be beginning. So we can adjust these clips at the same time. And if you notice, when I click, hold, and drag, we have that white frame that pops up. So that's going to show us the amount of time that we have available for the clip that we're adjusting here. So you can see the length of that clip. Once we come to the end, we cannot adjust anymore because that's the end of our soup clip, that first soup clip. So I hope that makes sense. Now also, if I'd like to shorten the time of this clip here, we can select that and then come to the edge where we have the single bracket. And then if I click, hold, and drag, we're now seeing a preview of where that first clip is going to end and where our second is going to begin. And as you can see, everything's going to be rippled. Our clips that follow will be pulled forward, which is a tremendous time saver for editing. If we wanted to come to the beginning of our project, let's select multiple clips, come to the beginning where we have the single bracket, click hold, and we can actually move everything forward, trim that, and ripple edit at the same time for our project. So if you have, if you're totally finished with your project and there's one or two seconds that's you wish we're not at the beginning, you can use this tool, the trim edit mode, to pull everything forward. And remove those one or two seconds. Now with the same tool active, if we come to the center of a clip here with the double brackets, we can actually slip the video that's within that clip as long as we have enough time to do so. Noticing the white frames, that's going to show us the entirety of the clip and give us the boundaries for how much we can slip that. Now if we come to the first one here, we're not able to slip at all because we're showing the entirety of the clip. So let's come to the end with a single bracket and let's pull that in. And then now when we come to the center, we can see that we can slip that and pull everything, including our audio, forward. Let's undo. Now, we also have a blade tool. So if we click once to activate that or press B on our QWERTY keyboard, that becomes active. And of course, as you imagine, we can come in and make cuts to our clips. And I'm going to press A to bring back our selection mode again. And let's select this first clip here. And I can press backspace to remove that. Let's control Z because if I shift and backspace, let's first select the clip, shift and backspace. That's going to ripple edit. So it's going to remove and pull the following clips forward. Now, next to our blade tool, we have several buttons that we can make use of for inserting clips into our timeline. And we've already seen that we can click, hold, and drag and make use of the overlay options. But we have a couple of these options here via the buttons. So we have insert clip. So let's actually come to our media pool and let's find another video. Let's say this one here. Or what about this one? We'll double click to make that active. 
And we'll use the playhead here to scrub through and just get this close up on the pad tie. So I'm gonna press I to put an endpoint, and then let's press the space bar to play back. And O for the out point. So now you can see our in and out point here. And where we before clicked, hold, and dragged and used the overlay, we can make use of these buttons here. So the first one is gonna be insert clip, and it's going to insert and ripple edit at our playhead position. Let's control Z to undo. The next one that we have is overwrite. So that's gonna overwrite the clip after our playhead for the length of our in and out points. So let's go ahead and click the center one. Okay, so you can see that this clip was overwritten. Let's again undo. And then we have replace clip. So let's actually position our playhead at the beginning of the shorter clip, and then we'll make use of this one. And we can see that the original clip has now been replaced with the new one. Now we previously saw that we can lock a track, so let's say our video one track or our food track, by clicking on the lock mode, and then make an adjustment to say our audio, and that's not going to affect our video. It's only going to be for our audio. But we can go about this another way. Let's unlock our food track. And so if I select both the video clip, the audio is selected as well. Same for this clip, same for this clip. If I select the audio, it's gonna select the video. So these are all linked but we can unlink our tracks by right-clicking, and then at the bottom of our contextual menu, we have link clips. So if I click once to toggle that off, I can now, in this way, select each individually, our video and audio, come to the beginning here, and trim just the audio as well. But we will select the audio, hold shift, select the video, Let's right click and link these clips again. And just know that in our timeline header, we have this little chain here, which is going to link or unlink all of the clips within our timeline. So if I disengage that, you can see it's no longer highlighted. I can come to any of these clips and make adjustments without worrying about them affecting their previously associated clip. and turning the link back on. They are relinked. So let's go ahead and undo all of those changes. Now next, we can flag our clips. So if I select this one here, and let's choose a color, let's just say the red, and we can see we now have some red flags on our clip there. If we'd like to remove, we can clear all. Then we can put markers in our timeline, so wherever our playhead is positioned, maybe say here at the beginning of the smaller clip, we can click once to add a marker there. Let's come to our next clip, change the color to yellow, and then we can see we now have a marker here. So what if we'd like to add text to our timeline? Let's move our playhead forward a bit. Let's come to a bit of a darker area. And we can change our media pool. We wanna change the tab here to effects. And here we can access all of the effects that come with Resolve, whether it's video transitions, audio transitions. And actually let's start with a video transition. And we can Let's position our cursor in between these two clips. And then as we hover over the additive dissolve, we can see a preview in our timeline viewer of what this effect is gonna look like. And if we'd like to add it, we can click, hold, and drag to our timeline. 
But first we need to be sure that we actually have footage to perform the cross dissolve. So let's activate our trim edit mode and we'll pull this back. And we'll also pull this one back a little bit as well. So now that we've trimmed the front and end of both of these clips, when I click, hold, and drag this, we can now add that. Let's hold Alt and zoom in. And we can see our additive dissolve here. If I play back, we can see that that shows up in our timeline viewer. If we'd like to make it longer, we can hover on the edge here and shrink it or make it larger. And while the dissolve is highlighted in red, we can actually open up our inspector and make some adjustments to its parameters here. So we can see the duration in seconds or frames. We've got alignment settings, start ratio, and so on. We can even come to the drop down menu here and choose a different style. So let's choose the barn door just randomly and let's come back, move our playhead. Okay, pretty tacky, but just so you know, you can experiment with the different options that you have here. And if you'd like to remove while this is highlighted, just be sure if I click on the clips, you see we this is now active. If we want to remove our additive dissolve, just click on that. We now have the red border and I can press backspace to remove that out. So that's how you can go about adding transitions to your clips. And again, there's a ton to choose from here. We also have some audio transitions for crossfade. And I do wanna mention about this. Let's press A to get our select mode back. If we hold, I believe, shift, I'm gonna test my memory here. Okay. Alt and Shift will create an automatic crossfade for us. So we don't necessarily need to come up to the effects menu. Um, let's get our timeline back in order here. And we would want to come to the center bar here to pull these back up. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. So holding Alt and Shift, I can then pull this and create an automatic crossfade for our video and audio clips. Okay, but we were talking about titles or text. So we can see in our effects area, now that this is active, we've seen the transitions, we can click on titles. And then here towards the bottom of the first group, we have text and we have text plus. So text is going to be give you basic options for adding text to your project. The text plus is going to give you lots more options for adding effects and movements to your text. For this video, let's just start with the text. Maybe we'll take a look at text plus, but we can just drag that to our video too, because we already have a second video track. And then now we can see basic title is showing up here. And I actually want to move this to a darker clip. So let's Click, hold, and drag this forward to here. Move our playhead cursor. We can see this a little bit better. And with our inspector open, again, just by clicking here, we can see basic title that's there. Let's just call this amazing food. Not the most original, I know, but that is how we can change our text to be whatever we'd like it to say. Now. Below that, this is pretty much like any text editor word that you're used to. You can choose the font family. Clicking on this drop down menu, you can choose a different font. You actually have a preview, previews dynamically in your timeline viewer, which is convenient for quickly finding a new font. We then have the font face, the size we can adjust here. Tracking, which is going to space our individual letters out. Line spacing, font style. So a ton of different options here. 
our stroke, whether we'd like a drop shadow. So by coming to the offset here, if I just click hold and drag that to the right, we can see on the x-axis, I hope you can see that, let's come to the y-axis and introduce that as well. So we can see our little drop shadow popping up here. If we'd like a background, we can add that as well. So this is active. We can tell by the slider that that's red, but we're not seeing it because the height is all the way down. But if I click hold and drag here, we can see that that then pops up. I can come to the width, pull this in, and adjust like so. And we can adjust the opacity here at the very bottom. Now, anytime that we'd like to reset our parameters, we can do so uh, for each individual one by double clicking on the name. So if our width, we'd like to take that to the default, we double click. The height, double click, which should make it go away. Now, I'm gonna bring these back just in a second just to show that we can also return all parameters back at once by using this here. And that's gonna apply for any of these options that we're making use of. Now when we add the text, we're on the title tab up above here by default, but we can also come over to the settings and we can transform our text as well. So if we'd like to zoom in, we can click, hold, and drag. If we'd like to change the position, our Y position, our pitch, and the yaw, And we can actually keyframe all of these settings as well. So if we'd like to have movement with this, we can make use of the keyframes. And again, as we just saw, we can use these to reset individually or by double clicking on the name, or we can use the one at the very top to set reset all parameters at once. And quickly, we can flip with these two at the bottom. Scrolling down, you can see that we have cropping, dynamic zoom, and composite, speed change, and stabilization. So even though we're working with the basic text, you can still do a lot here. Now let's come back to the title and let's be sure this is highlighted, backspace, remove that out. Let's click, hold, and drag our text plus in and let's give that another shot. There we go. Now you can see we can rename just as before. But along with that and our settings, we have a ton of different options here. So for our layout, transform, shading, image, and settings. So a lot more options when you're working with the text plus. And we'll go into that in a separate dedicated video. And another thing to be aware of is that in the bottom left-hand corner of our timeline viewer, we can actually click on this button to activate transform settings. So we can use this to adjust the size and spin this around. So we can do that directly within our viewer as well by clicking here to be sure that that's active. Now, if we click on this drop down arrow, we can actually access crop, dynamic zoom. So let's take our playhead to the beginning of this clip here actually, and let's pull this in. And you can see that that's adding a dynamic zoom to our text. So the red borders is gonna be what we start off with and the green is where we end up at. Okay, now we also have effects overlay, fusion overlay, and annotations. So other options for your viewer window. Okay, let's zoom out and start to wrap up here. We'll finish up by just taking a look at some of the different settings and options that we have within the inspector because the inspector is a really useful panel for performing certain actions. So let's see, for our video clip, 
when we have this selected, we're taken to the video tab, and then we have some zoom options. Let's turn off this setting here within our viewer. So we can zoom in. We can change the position. Our rotation angle. Set an anchor point. Our pitch. Yaw. And flip. Let's reset everything back by clicking here. And then we have cropping. That's pretty self-explanatory. We've got dynamic zoom, which we can activate. So just by clicking that, we can create zooms and we can change whether it's going to be linear or ease in and ease out or in and out. And we can swap whether we're going to start by zooming in or zooming out. We then have composite and speed change. So if we'd like to change the speed of our clip, maybe say speed it up a bit, we can do that with speed change. And we can keep it playing in a forward direction or we can have it play back reverse. We can actually freeze frame as well with a little snowflake here. So what I'm gonna do is actually speed this up and I'm going to engage the ripple timeline because if I were to speed this up twice as fast, the clip should be cut in half essentially, which would leave an empty space before our next clips. But if we engage the ripple timeline, it's gonna pull all of the other clips in our timeline forward after we make the change. So the speed, I'm gonna take this up to say about 200. And if you notice in the timeline, that's gonna change. Our ripple edit happened. And then when we play this back, it's playing back quicker. Now, another tool that we have for changing the speed of our video clips or is using the read time. So let's alt. Actually, I'm going to press shift and Z to see everything. And I want to find a clip with a bit more movement. And let's actually mute our audio. The audio song. Okay, so in the name of time, I'm just going to go ahead and press S to split that. We'll zoom in on our clip, select it, and let's press Shift and R. And actually, we want Control R. So let's Control Z to undo that and control R, and this gives us our read time controls. So we can come to the bottom drop down menu, and we can come to change speed. If we'd like to play it back by half, we can choose 50%, and so then that's gonna slow down. Let's undo, and if we position our cursor here, Let's come back and add a speed point. Then it's going to place a speed point there. We'll position our cursor here. Add another speed point. And then now we can click hold and make adjustments to these markers here. So we can see that this first area is being slowed down. If I come back to the left, we speed up. Coming to this marker here. We're now slowing down the center. And you can see that the percentages are updating here. And of course, we can always come to the down arrow and just set a specific speed, say 25%. And there's a ton that you can do with the retime controls. We're actually going to do a separate video for it alone. But I just wanted to be sure to mention how you can go about accessing it and briefly cover some of the settings. But let's take this back to 100. And actually, we'll just go ahead and undo everything. And let's zoom out. Select these clips and pull them forward. Actually, I'll undo that and let's zoom in to this empty area here because I just want to show a cool little trick here. If I click in the empty space, you can see that that highlights. And I can actually press backspace on the QWERTY keyboard and remove that empty area and it will ripple edit 
the clips that follow. Now selecting our audio, this switches our inspector over to the audio tab and you can see that we have controls. We've already seen this previously. Just to recap our volume, we can adjust that. Our panning, we have a dialogue leveler. We can adjust our pitch and we have the equalizer. But of course, if you wanted to go seriously deep into working with your audio and mixing, adding effects and everything, then that would be what your Fairlight page is for. But still for smaller projects, for many projects, we can still accomplish everything that we need within the edit page. Okay, so let's uh, shift Z to zoom out and let's pull in this song, this audio file. And just note one last thing that I thought of, when we hover on a clip, we have this white handle that shows up in the top right corner. We can create fades with this for our audio as well as our video. So let's actually zoom in a bit on this one here. So as I hover, you notice the handle pops up. I can click hold, pull that to the left to create a fade out. We have this white circle that I can adjust whether this is gonna be linear or have a curve to it. And we have the same option for our video clips. Coming here, we can pull that in to create a fade out. Let's move this one out of the way, set our playhead, and we can see our fade out. Okay. All right, let's shift Z and, and the final thing we'll take a look at is rendering down. And we've already seen that we can do that in the deliver page, but let's actually come up to file at the top just to show that we have a quick export that we can access here. As I was saying, pretty much anything that you wanna do, you can do on the edit page. So even exporting, if we choose that. Then we have a pop-up window where we can choose from the uh, 264 master, Hyperdeck, or 265 master. We can also choose YouTube. Okay, now you can't go in and adjust different settings like your frame rate your resolution here as you can in the deliver page, but if you wanted to quickly get something out uh, with one of these presets or to your Dropbox, then you can use this here. If you link, link to your accounts, you can even sign in and upload directly to YouTube, Vimeo, or Twitter. But let's cancel out of here. For our purposes, we're going to go to the deliver page to finish up this video. And by default, DaVinci is going to kind of set in and outs for the entire timeline, wherever it finds clip, wherever your last clip is, and wherever, wherever your first clip is. Let's uh, shift and Z to see everything here. So anything that falls within this line is gonna be exported down. And you can see, render, we have entire timeline. Now, if I were to come to the beginning of this gray line, and click and hold and drag this in, we can see that up above the switch is to in out range. So I had just set my in, if I set my out here. Now when we render, we're only gonna be rendering this specific range. If we'd like to go back to our entire timeline, click on the drop down menu and select entire timeline. Now our project is 1080p and say we wanna to upload to YouTube, so let's come up to the top where we have our presets and then here we have our YouTube. Let's click on the drop down menu and change that to 1080p. We can see res resolution is set here. We can give a name, tutorial video, and then choose a location where this is gonna be rendered down to. I'm just gonna save this to the desktop. We'll click on save. And then now just double check all of your settings. Let's add that to our render queue. We can see that that pops up here in the top right hand corner. And then now all we need to do is click on render all. And the reason why this says render all is because we can actually export multiple formats. So if we wanted to do Vimeo as well or different resolutions for YouTube, we can go ahead and set those up. So if I wanted to do say 2K, I can add that to the render queue, adding higher resolution. It's upscaling, it wants to be sure, yes. So now we have two projects. And if I deselect that, we have render all. That's going to do both of them. If I select one, then it's going to render one. 
So let's actually just select the job one, the 1080p, and then click on render. And that's gonna go ahead and begin the process and render down our video. If we'd like to stop, then we can always just click on stop here. We have a timeline showing how much is remaining. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and stop this though. And I think we'll go ahead and wrap up here, guys. This went on a bit longer than I had initially intended, but I wanted to be sure that I included everything that's gonna be most useful for beginners who are just getting started and wanna know how you can go about importing your media, trimming your clips, adjusting your audio, adding transitions, fades, all those basic things that are actually very important when you're beginning working with a new video editor. Okay, so I hope this has been useful, guys. We're going to wrap up and I will see you in the next tutorial.